Customer, do you work here? Me. Hello, friends, and welcome back to r slash I do work here, lady. I want to say thank you very much to everyone who signed up for the channel and hit the like button. And our first story. Power hungry employee doesn't know I'm the owner. I once owned a computer store with one of my best friends. As we started to grow, we found it was becoming more and more difficult to handle all the in-store repairs as well as out-of-store work that we had coming in. We decided we needed to hire someone for the front counter. Unfortunately, I went on vacation when my partner had hired her. Not that this was a problem as we knew what we needed and I knew he could find someone. When I returned from vacation, I had some out of town work that needed to be done with a high dollar client. This work took another two weeks, so I'd not had the chance to meet the new employee. The first day back just happened to be the same day my partner started his vacation. I walk in. Me. Hi, you must be power man. I'm PMB cuts me off. I don't care who you are. What can I help you with? I don't see you with a computer. What are you looking for? Me. Excuse me? PMB. You should be. What do you need? I have a lot to do to open the store. Me. Sorry, I don't think you understand who I am. PMB. You're no one important. Me. Oh, really? You do know. I could have you unemployed in one hour. PMB. Oh, yeah? Whatever. I personally know the owner. He hired me personally. I doubt he would fire me. Get out of the store before I call the cops. Me. I doubt he would want you to treat people like crap, but yeah, that's a good idea. Let's call the cops. PMB. Okay, here I go. I'm calling them. Me. Great. I pull out my cell phone and call my partner. Me. Hey, I know you just started your vacation, dude, but I think we have an employee problem. PMB was very rude when I walked in this morning. I attempted to tell her who I was, but she wouldn't let me get that far. Now she's calling the cops to have me removed. Yeah, I can hand you over for a sec. PMB. Oh, who's this? Someone who's playing the part of the owner now? I know what he sounds like. I hand her the phone. She now has two phones to her head, my cell and the office phone, which may or may not have the police on the line. I still don't think she ever called the cops. I hear him lighting into her. I couldn't hear the conversation. However, I did ask him later. Here's the basic. Partner. I basically told her I'm tired of her holier-than-thou attitude, and if she can't accept people coming into the store and interrupting her, she's not cut out to work in the store anymore. I told her she just told the other owner of the store he's not welcome, pack your stuff up, and you're no longer needed. She hangs up the office phone and hands my cell phone back to me with tears in her eyes. Me. You want me to work up some termination paperwork? Partner. Yeah, let me know how it turns out. I have a stack of applications on my desk. I'll see you in a week. Me. PMB. You got your paycheck Friday, correct? PMB nods. Yes. Me. Awesome. I owe you about five bucks for 30 minutes you wasted today. I take 10 minutes to type up the reasons for termination, all while she sits in a chair crying like a two-year-old. Thanks. And don't let the door smack you in the ass on your way out. I walk over to the register, pull out a five, and point her towards the door. We never saw her again. Treats people like crap, is surprised when they're fired. I imagine it's easy to get stressed, but I'll never understand that response. And we're on to the next story. You just flopped the chief operating officer's son. I used to work in a summer student program at a Fortune 500 company that hired around 150 interns from May to August. The work itself was pretty monotonous, but for the most part, everyone was pretty warm towards the interns, save for Jamie. Jamie was a plump woman in her mid-40s, working in a team supervisor role, two levels above entry level, in the operations department for about a decade. Now, I don't know whether it was that she'd been working at this level for too long or just didn't like the young faces, but she was an absolute better wench to the interns. Aside from calling us little craps, brats, tards, and a slurry of other abusive language, she would also ask the interns, who weren't on her team, to randomly do tasks for her. This ranged from grabbing her papers from the copier, literally 20 feet from her desk, running errands and demanding we drop what we're doing and make coffee for her. Now, out of respect, most, if not all, of the interns on the floor would comply to prevent a scene, but she had this idea in her head that since she was a supervisor, she was all of our bosses. She would constantly leave her desk to walk the floor and monitor the summer interns, spitting slurs at us if she caught us doing as much as glancing away from our monitors. 
In contrast to this, she would constantly brown nose to the managers and senior managers, trying to curry favor by helping take care of the interns. Suffice to say, she was an angst-filled bee. But me, myself? I was a quiet young lad who hated unnecessary attention from others, so I didn't openly volunteer that my mom was the chief operating officer. She worked up on the executive floor, so I rarely saw her aside from occasionally at lunch and carpooling. So aside from her upper management friends, few people knew I was her son. So all was well until the end of my first month. It was sometime in the morning when Jamie stopped me on my way from the bathroom and demanded that I stop wasting time and get her a coffee from the kitchen with two stevia and two milk. Not being the confrontational type, I went and made it as asked for, with maybe just a smidge of extra milk in it. When I brought it to her, she half yelled, finally, grabbed it and sipped it. Then she said, it's wrong, and shoved it back in my face with enough force to dislodge the cheap lip and spill coffee all over my dress shirt. She yelled something at me, but I couldn't really hear it as I felt the coffee. TBH, I'm kind of glad I added the extra milk, because the scalding hot magma would have been so much worse without it. I effing screamed and ran to the bathroom crying, taking off my shirt to get water on my burns. My upper chest was so red, I immediately called my mom, sob-splaining what had just happened. My mom whipped downstairs, came to the bathroom, pulled me out, and was greeted by three large security guards. She told me to point out who did it, and point I did. What followed was my mom telling one guard to call 911, the other two to detain her for assaulting an employee. Jamie's face was flushed and screamed like a banshee as security apprehended her. She kicked and screamed all the way to the elevator. Police came, got the videotapes, corroborated my story, and she was taken in. All cool, but the icing on the cake was that she originally was going to be charged with second-degree assault, but the interns who were interviewed about her confirmed that she is actually abusive to us. This was proof of premeditation, so her charges were raised to first-degree assault. I hope prison treats you better than you treated the interns, Jamie. She was screwed no matter what, despite who your mother was. As soon as an intern walks into HR with burns on their chest, it'd get looked into. Your mother only sped things along. In her next story. Mistaken for a middle schooler in the school I assist in. So I'm still fairly young, 23. However, I am regularly mistaken for way younger even now. The story happened about two and a half years ago when I was in college studying for my bachelor's in special education. As a program requirement, I had to get 100 some hours in schools working with students and assisting teachers. Think unpaid internship type situation. So yes, it wasn't an official job where I got paid, but I figured it fit this subreddit close enough. Cast of characters. Me, angry teacher, innocent kid, good teacher, my mentor who I eventually student taught under. So this school I was assisting in, in an 8th grade class and a 6th grade class. In this school, each grade level had a different bell schedule, so there was about a 15 minute time span where I was scheduled to be in both classes at once, so I always left the one early and ran to get to my next class as soon as possible. One day I was rushing, but I was on my phone because I was waiting for an important email to come in, so I was just checking to see if I'd gotten it. As I'm rushing to my second class when I hear, angry teacher, what are you doing? I look around and see a teacher sitting in the hall working with innocent kid. Me. I'm going to my next class. Angry teacher. You know you shouldn't be on your phone. I then realized she thought I was a student. Even though I was wearing my volunteer badge, it was on the same side she was. Me. I'm sorry, but I'm not a... Angry teacher. Turn that phone off, ma'am. Innocent kid. Eyes bugging out at what was going on. At this point, I was very late to my next classroom. I kept getting cut off when I tried to explain that I'm 20-ish years old, not 12. So I gave up and just kept walking because I had a job to do, and sitting there arguing was getting me nowhere. Angry teacher gets up and starts following me, innocent kid in tow. I eventually made it to my next class assignment and started to set up when angry teacher walks in ready to yell and probably write me up for blowing her off. Good teacher. Hi, angry teacher. Have you met her? She's my volunteer on Tuesdays. Angry teacher. Goes very pale after realizing, uh, not until today. Sorry for intruding. I have to get back to my class. Angry teacher with innocent kids still in tow leaves quickly looking very embarrassed. 
I explained to good teacher after she left and we had a good laugh afterwards. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, be sure to leave a comment, like, and subscribe. I really appreciate it. And see you soon.